everybody, video here for you today. This has been a subject I've looked into for about eight years now. When I first started doing videos, one of the things that really got me interested in doing videos on YouTube was what happened 12,000 years ago and all the mysteries that are involved in that. But today we're gonna to go down to, first of all, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Where we're gonna be talking about many different areas of the East Coast here. First, this is Myrtle Beach. Now, I think a lot of you have heard of the Carolina Bays. Some of you may not have heard of these. A lot of you probably have seen some of Antonio Zamora's videos, Randall Carlson's videos on this subject. But all appears normal around Myrtle Beach here until you zoom in. And there is really no better place to show you all these Carolina Bays. And right in here, their formations, different sizes all appeared to be oriented in the same way in groups like this. Here are a bunch of them right here. Here is North Myrtle Beach right here. Just west of that, you have several large elliptical depressions. Some of these are kind of fading away. Some of these are barely detectable today. Some of them you can only find using LIDAR. Tens of thousands of these along the coast here. You notice these golf courses down here. These are large 18-hole golf courses. Well, some of these depressions would have totally engulfed those golf courses right there. Then as we go kind of to the south and west here, you have these huge fields of these depressions. Here are some large ones, small ones, but all oriented in the same direction. Almost for sure, this event all happened at once. Whatever created these. And as you go down here, there's a few down here. You can just barely make them out in here, fading away. This is just west of Forest Brook. Just a few fading away in here. One right there, you can just barely make it out right here. And there's another one that's bordering this golf course right here. Some of these have water in them. Some have kind of dried up, but have a little bit of water left. We have entire lakes. This is Lake Wakama right here. This is about the largest Carolina Bay that we have. Lake about five miles long. Elliptical depression here. I first mentioned this lake when I started looking into this time frame. What happened? Here is a video I made September of 2012 where I talk about the ice age, the extinct animals, the rise in sea levels, and a possible impact on the ice sheet in this video. This is when I maybe had three or 400 subs. So I've been looking into this for a long time, but the Carolina Bays really got me interested because we have something here that we can't explain. Did it come from this time period? Well, that's certainly a possibility. Just north of Lake Wakama here, we have this whole area where some sort of bombardment happened, it appears. What exactly landed here? Well, it's not meteors. There is no evidence that these were like fragmented meteors. We don't have the evidence of that, but something was falling here. These rims are about, I think, about three feet high, not very high. Can't really notice them too much from ground level. But here is a look at a whole area covered with these elliptical bay formations. Here's that one area. I'll give you an idea of the different water formations in these bays. Some don't have any water. Some just have a little water here. But this really gives you an idea of how widespread they are. And this is a little eerie. I think we better find out what created these. I think that would be a good idea. There's a lot of competing theories. Here is one lake. It has an odd lake shape formation. But when you look from it from overhead, you can clearly see it's in one of these bays here. The area I'm showing you is just south and east of Fayetteville down here. There's one area where there's not too many homes, neighborhoods. A lot of these are still totally evident here, Google Earth. Here's a little comparison I made the other night. This is Robeson County, just south of Fayetteville. You can see a lot of them on Google Earth. LIDAR, well, see a lot more of them. You get an idea of how intensely these are imprinted in the Earth right here. That gives you a good idea of how you can see them here on Google Earth and how more detectable they are in LIDAR. That comparison was done just east of the Lorenberg-Maxton Airport right here. This is where I did that, right here. 
but both south east and southwest of Fayetteville. You can find a lot of these on Google Earth, and I am not going to pretend to have an answer for these. It's all right sometimes just to say I don't know and throw all this out there for discussion. Maybe a few people are learning something new today. Maybe somebody will come up with a bright answer. This is a huge mystery, though. I think this is one that needs to be shared. Before I show you some more on Google Earth, why don't we do a little reading? It says, Why Carolina Bays Are an Enduring Mystery. This comes from January of this year. Here's a look at one of these bays with some water in it. It says, Earth still holds secrets. Among those secrets, what formed the Carolina Bays, Earth's most mysterious landform? People drive by them without a clue as to what they're seeing. A swamp, they think. Were they to fly over them, however, they'd see the elliptical parallel landforms running northwest to southeast. The parent spurred theories that a meteorite bombardment created the unusual landforms we call the Carolina Bays. Isolated wetlands, they overlap and occur as smaller bays inside larger ones. They vary from a few square feet to a few thousand acres. North Carolina's Lake Wakama at 5.2 by 3.5 miles is one of the largest bays. Here's a look at ground level, one of them. It says Carolina Bays has nothing to do with coastal waters. Carolina refers to the fact that the most and best bays concentrate in the Carolinas. Bays refers to the prevalence of bay trees, especially sweet bay, red bay, magnolias, and laurels that grow in them. From 500,000 to as many as a million bays, Dimple the Atlantic Coastal Plain from New Jersey to Florida and Alabama. Here is a look at LIDAR at a few of these bay formations right here. It says this 3D representation precisely illustrates the bog's elliptical shape and orientation. This appeared to all happen at once. What created these? Well, I wish I had a good original answer. But I will listen to people who have looked into this mystery for a long time. I thoroughly recommend you check out Antonio Zamora's channel. Those of you who read Graham Hancock's books are already familiar with Antonio's work. And of course, Randall Carlson, uh, I know he mentioned these about a month and a half ago on a video on his channel. And he said he's going to be making a video solely on the Carolina Bays. And I'm looking forward to that. He talks about the different competing theories here. It says... Where did they come from? From meteorite and icy comet bombardments to volcanoes, sinkholes, and nesting whales. No, nesting whales? No one theory comes out on top, though Ray Kazarowski's orientated Lake Genesis theory enjoys a more traction than others. To me, my gut impression and my first impression, this is created by something impacting at a low angle, all coming from the same direction here, all coming at the same time. That was my gut impression. The one theory out there that these are all created by an earthly process, and I can't even remember the name for it, the Artesian Solustrian something, something. I'm not even going to try to pretend to know exactly what it means. Here is a video that Randall did on April 13th. I will leave the link to this below. But around 21 minutes into it or so, he goes into explaining that. And he does a much better job than I can ever do, so I will leave the link to this video below. I will leave this link below. This is Mother Nature Network. It talks about the vast amount of life that's growing in these bays. Here you see some Venus flytraps. Here is Sumter, South Carolina. Let's just go south and west of the city here, down to this area, right down here. Let's take a look at some LIDAR. What is in these neighborhoods right here? Here is the neighborhood. Down here in the bottom left, you see several of these elliptical depressions right here. Google Earth, not quite as easy to make out. Now here's an area just north and west of Charleston. I call these dark bays. The farther south you get, the more north-south these are oriented. Here you see I call these dark bays, but you can see just a whole bunch of them in here. What created these? It seems to be this was some kind of energy burst or maybe fragments coming from an impact event. Just south of here, some of these bays actually have names. These are not as noticeable as the ones up in North Carolina. This is called Foster's Bay. But from looking overhead, you can clear, clearly see an elliptical formation here. And these appear to be made from a low angle 
impact event of some kind? Was it an energy burst, chunks of ice that came down in this area? That's all up for debate. But Antonio Zamora, I'm sure you are familiar with him. You think this was an impact on the ice sheet? And then a whole bunch of debris got thrown up into the atmosphere, came down and created these formations here. Just south of Wilmington here, Cape Fear. This is another area that has many of these elliptical depressions. You can see them right down here. Barely noticeable on ground level. There is one here that appears to have a couple different rims on it. But these are pretty easy. When you look at these for a long time, these are pretty easy to find, especially make sure you're oriented perfectly north. They become more evident here. All sorts of different kinds in this area, right down here. Just north of that area, Cape Fear. I call this the half faded field. Because right now you can just see part of these rims, maybe a half or a little more of these, but some of these are kind of fading away. There is a whole field of them out here, some just barely perceptible. Here's an area just south of Holly Shelter Game Land, and just west of Topsail Beach. A bunch of these depressions, clearly noticeable here. Was this an impact on the ice sheets that just sent huge raindrops and created these depressions here? Well, let's take a look at a video I made maybe three or four years ago. Now, there is no theory that I totally agree with, and there is no theory that I totally dismiss, though the one that this was somehow caused by water and wind and kind of erosion and all eroded these things in the same way, I think that one is a little absurd. But could an impact in this area of the world sent debris all the way down to here? Well, let's just watch a simulation of a comet impact. I believe this is based on what happened on Jupiter years ago. Here's a video I made three and a half years ago. Now, when we have an impact event, it's just not the impact itself. It's all the energy that is released. This is based on a fragmented comet here. Hitting Jupiter, just check out the energy involved in this. A major impact event up in this area of the world. And there is some discussion about Saginaw Bay right in here. I will leave links below to Antonio's videos. But could that event have caused this? Well, I don't dismiss it. The amount of energy and the things that would have been displaced on impact due to all the energy, well, it could have created these, that is for sure. I also wonder about something coming down and exploding and just sending an energy wave or if a comet is full of ice, just melted fragments of the comet coming down and creating those bays. There's also some bays in the Nebraska area. They are not easy to find on Google Earth. Could something have exploded high up in the atmosphere and just spread out these energy waves in these areas here? Well, that's possible.
just east of Greenville, Phelps Lake down here, doesn't appear elliptical, but when you really look on Google Earth and look at the outline of the lake, you can clearly see a rim going up here and coming down here. This was created by the same process, most likely. I want to thank Antonio Zamora for sending me information on this. I was wondering about the dating. It's very confusing to me how they dated this here. Overturned flaps demonstrate inverted stratigraphy here. But I will leave some links below, but there is some dating that points to the Younger Dryas period. That is a video on the Carolina Bays. Hope this was new information for some of you. Please leave your comments below. This is a big mystery with no solid answers, so any comments is worth sharing. Here's a look at some more of these on LiDAR. If you like using Google Earth, this is a cool thing to check out. Just spreading the word on these. I know a lot of people know about these already. I will leave a link to Antonio Zamora's channel. He has looked into these for years. Randall Carlson also has some thoughts on these. That was my video exploring these on Google Earth. Thought that was cool and you all have a very safe.